So partially at the request of some friends over on Twitter, partially because of the eternal praise that I have seen for the thing, and partially out of my own interest in it, I have begun watching The Legend of the Galactic Heroes, the 100 plus episode great political space opera based off of a series of novels written by Tanaka Yoshiki, I believe, and released over a roughly 10 year period spanning the 1980s and 1990s. My thought was I'm going to start watching some classic anime, which I of course need to because I don't really have that much exposure to it at this point. I might as well start with one of the big ones, and I must say that the show has really, really impressed me up to this point, meaning 12 episodes in. I was initially planning on doing one review for each season, roughly every 25 episodes or so, if I'm understanding that correctly, if I've looked at my uh, season breakdown charts correctly. However, 12 episodes in, there is more than enough content to discuss, and it looks like we're about to start something rather big, and so I've sort of come to the conclusion that this is, number one, a good stopping point to begin to discuss things, and also I've come to the conclusion that doing, that addressing this show in such large chunks would actually be something of a disservice to it, just because there is so much to discuss even this early in. So basically, I'm planning on doing a review every 10 to 15 episodes or so, give or take, or whenever something really, really major happens. And since we're dealing with about 110 episodes in the main series, at least I'm not talking about, um, I know that there is some extra stuff, like total of 160 or so because of like OVAs and whatnot, I'm not sure, but I know that there is more. And that means somewhere in between 7 and 10, 7 and 11 reviews total, and then a few than a full series review at the end. Hopefully that is a solid plan, however, if you have watched the series and you have a better idea of how to structure these reviews, please let me know in the comments, I'd be happy to hear them, and because you guys know far more about this anime right now than I do, if you are interested in checking out someone's first impressions on the series. But what is The Legend of the Galactic Heroes about? Basically, we are caught up in the middle of a great intergalactic war, a war that's been going on for about 150 years or so, if I'm understanding things correctly, a war between the Monarchial Galactic Empire and the Democratic Free Planets Alliance. And on each side, I suppose you could say, we are given a representative around whom the story centers. Essentially, on the side of the Empire, we follow Reinhard von Lohengrim, and on the side of the Alliance, we follow Yang Wen Li. Both are young, brilliant upstarts in their respective militaries, but are otherwise entirely different sorts of individuals. And I would say that, at this point in time, the two of these guys are, without question, the most interesting aspects of the show, primarily because of how they play off of each other and how they are somewhat paradoxical. To begin, the similarities, as I said earlier, each of the two of them are young military geniuses, essentially. The early episodes of The Legend of the Lucky Heroes seem to serve two purposes, essentially. To set up the political system, the world, the characters, the scene, the themes, etc, 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 and to showcase to us how brilliant the two of these men are, and that they are, whenever they face off against each other, or whether they face off with, like, opposition on their own side, they generally either come to a stalemate in the former case, or they emerge the clear victor in the latter. And the overwhelming brilliance of both Reinhard and Yang is for me both a strength and a weakness of the series at this point in time. In cases where they're facing off against each other, I am consistently very, very impressed. And I would imagine that as the series goes on, these tactical showdowns, I suppose you could say, will grow all the more complicated, all the more entertaining, and all the more thought-provoking. And each of them, even though they represent entirely different worldviews, I suppose you could say, present very compelling reasons, I suppose you could say, for what exactly they're fighting for. We get that through backstory, we get that through their own words, and such. However, I must say that their intelligence is, for the most part, so vastly above the apparent intelligence of most of the majority of the cast, including their military seniors, particularly those that they disagree with, and this is a tiny bit strange to me, I must say. I understand that this is simply the establishing point of the series, and naturally one of the most essential tasks of a writer at this point in a story is to make clear to the audience what this story is going to be about, but it would honestly be more impressive to me if Yang and Reinhardt were outwitting intelligent men, as opposed to men who are, well, less so. Many of their victories thus far have been, yes, due to their own skill, of course, 
but they've been greatly aided, I, I would say, by the incompetence of those around them. To an audience, yes, what they're making, what they're saying makes perfect sense. It's a fantastically thought out plan, a fantastically thought out argument. You guys are clearly the correct ones to us. We're the ones that, you guys are the ones that we're supposed to agree with. But this is bolstered largely by the fact that the opposition is, oh, we must fight to the death, even though defeat seems obvious, but we shall die, any other options be damned. And I understand that these sort of people do exist, of course, and so I suppose that I could praise this sort of thing for being realistic in one sense, for not being afraid to show us that, wow, stupid people can really work their way into positions of authority, and I'm sure that that is a valuable point that the anime is trying to make. And also the issues themselves that are raised by these confrontations have provided very, very good food for thought, just in terms of ideology, the discussion that emerges between these two, they provide a lot of interesting things to think about for us as audience members. But there is an extent to which it almost seems too easy for our main characters. It's like, of course Reinhard is right, of course Yang is right, of course they're gonna outsmart the other guy. Duh, they're just this island of brilliance, and I would just like to get to see them struggle a little bit to be wrong from time to time. I mean, there are a hundred more episodes for that, and there have been plenty of potentially interesting supporting characters set up for the remainder of the show, in Oberstein especially, he really intrigues me, but still, I can't really talk that much about him right now. For the purposes of this stretch of the show, I would say that a bit more is needed. I'm sure that the rest of the show will deliver because I have been told that the earlier parts of the show are a bit weaker than the rest, which is honestly something that I tend to love when I am watching a long-running series, because it's often a sign that we are simply dealing with someone who is an overall very good writer that's just making their way through the tricky introduction phase, and once that is complete, they can really begin to shine. And it's already beginning to, honestly, don't get me wrong, because I can already see the setup for the greatness that is to come, all the characters that are being introduced, all the ideas that the show is raising, and I can honestly just put this complaint of mine first just so I could gush about the rest without having to sully it afterward, honestly. Because what we have here are two main characters, rife with contradiction, I guess you could say, of the best sort. They contradict our expectations as an audience, they contradict the sides that they are on, and they are somewhat contradictory in themselves. Because on the side of the Empire, we have Reinhard. The Empire, what you would expect in your ordinary piece of fiction to be unilaterally evil and oppressive. And on that side, our representative is a young visionary working his way up in the world simply by virtue of his own merit, by virtue of his own brilliance, and he's seeking power with the attentions of essentially dismantling this Empire that he serves, but also that he loathes. He, the imperial officer, is the one that is fed up with the decadence of the aristocracy, and is honestly rather progressively minded, not in the rightist versus leftist sense that characterizes modern politics. I'm not going to open up the can of worms that is real life politics, that does not matter. But in the sense that he always has his eyes on the future, or on the stars, as he always discusses with uh, Kirkes, his dear friend and confidant. And on the side of the Alliance, what you would have in your ordinary fiction, ordinary piece of fiction, expect to be simply good, oh, let's dismantle the evil empire. We have a man who, Yang Wen Li, who is simply disillusioned by the reality of the democratic ad ideal that he admires. His world is just as militaristic, just as controlled by corruption, as this evil empire is, even though the rebels essentially have those pretty words to back them up. And he finds himself in constant conflict, conflict with the people apparently on his side, as evidently fighting for democracy requires defying those very principles, to some people at least. And Yang, he's really only keeping in with all of this, something that he opposes, to prevent things from getting worse. This is in itself incredible, and it defies all traditional expectations of the rebels versus empire narrative. And it's honestly a narrative that I find infinitely more compelling. And th on this note, it's sort of the exact opposite of the problem that I had mentioned earlier. That's sort of a, it's so obvious that who, to the audience, who's right and who's wrong. But when we look at Yang, as opposed to Reinhard, out of the two of them, 
who's right and who's wrong. Is anyone here right or wrong? Because that's where the show really, really shines in showcasing two different protagonists, each fighting for a system that they as individuals are opposed to in some sense, two systems that are already standing in opposition to each other. And it's a show characterized by these different layers of conflict with two very, very interesting characters at its heart. And on this note, I would like to raise one more point, actually. I can't talk that much exactly about what's going on because we're really just at the very beginning. But something that I've been thinking about the show lately, more about the personalities than the ideologies of Yang and Reinhardt. We know that both of these men are brilliant, that is obvious. However, Reinhardt is very childish in personality, and Yang reads as, I don't know, as very, very mature, very seasoned, almost jaded. And I don't use either of these terms negatively or positively, but it sort of goes with what I was saying earlier about Reinhard being rather progressive, very active, and future-oriented. And then he is being the representative of a world that is regressive, the Empire. And one can conversely characterize Yang as being rather conservative, again, not in the modern political sense, but in that he tends to look backwards for wisdom, he studies history, and that he is very cautious in terms of action. While his world, the democratic one, something that we as a modern audience would more than likely be inclined to characterize as the future-oriented one, the progressive one. And it's just another layer of contradiction that the show seems to be playing with that I am really, really enjoying getting the chance to see. And I'm honestly quite excited to see where the rest of the show carries itself in this respect. It's quite impressive. And there's another element of this, actually. One would... Let's just uh, go with the childi childish versus mature comparison again for Reinhardt and Yang. The natural historical assumption that one would operate under is that societies move, they start off as monarchical, as aristocratic, and then they move toward the democratic ideal, correct? At least that's our common historical narrative. And we have Reinhardt being the very childish one, the one who, I suppose, at this stage in life, appears to be more, appears to be more simple-minded, I suppose you could say. I don't say this in a bad way. And then you have Yang, more mature. I guess you could say that his society is more mature as well, from, a, from what we assume to be the historical progression of things. And yet, with the immaturity, I suppose, that the empire, that um, Reinhard embodies, there's so much hope for him in the future that the sky is the limit as far as where the rest of the world is going to go. But yet for Yang, who's already there, who's more mature, he sees that it's not all that great anyway. That all of these problems, all of this corruption, all of this manipulating the people, that it still exists even though apparently we've made progress. I just think that that is very, very interesting, and even just from the very start, the little bit of setup that we've gotten at this point in the story, that it's introducing that sort of narrative. That's something that I find very interesting, especially just a giant history nerd myself. But um, what else is there as far as, uh, let's go more technically speaking, I suppose you could say. Um, I guess with a minor criticism, the animation is a little bit stiff, but I would also attribute that more to being the fact that it's a rather dated series rather than an issue of actual quality because the art itself is actually quite aesthetically pleasing i like it a lot i like the character designs i like the color choices and everything and i'm just looking forward also to just getting a better grasp on this world these politics all that stuff it seems to be a rather well constructed even though i haven't gotten really a solid enough grasp on what that is to actually speak about like more intricate matters just like uh, who is aiming for what seat of power and whatnot I can't really speak about that intelligently yet, just because I am so early into the show. But aside from that, Legend of the Galactic Heroes has made quite an excellent first impression on me, I must say. With a few issues, but every series has its own issues at the start. That's at least, at least in terms of long-running series. But, yeah, I think that's... I think that's all I've got to say for now. Can't wait for the next one. I believe that my next review is going to be at the end of what comprises season one. I believe that that's episode 25 or 26, roughly. That will be where my next review is. 
And then at that point, we'll take it from there. I don't know how I'm going to break up the rest of things, because I know that basically it's divided into four seasons, I believe, roughly 20 to 30, 40 episodes for each season. And apparently they were released at different intervals, so it's just like, for season one is going to have a certain level of production quality, then it's going to increase over time. So, yeah. That's all I've got for you guys today, Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Let me know what you think what your own thoughts on the Legend of Galactic Heroes are, any advice for someone who is starting to watch the show, what you thought of this review, feel free to let me know down in the comments, and please like or subscribe if you are so inclined more reviews are to come, and I really look forward to making them for you, because this is, this is a series that I had a lot of fun constructing the review for, which I can, which I can only say for a few things that I have watched a review that when I, re when I reach the end of like my reviewing, like the chunk of the show that I'm reviewing or, or manga or whatever, that I'm just like, I'm really excited to make this review. And that's honestly one of the best signs of what a good show is for me. So thank you very much again. I'll see you soon.